you are interested in the unusual, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. I know of your early career and some of the brilliant discoveries you made in the field of physics and that you were expelled from the International Congress of Physicists because of your theories. Oh, that was a humiliation which will soon be avenged, Mr. Crandall. But the one, what else did you learn of me? Well, I know that you were a friend and sponsor of Adolf Hitler, that you helped elevate him to power in the 30s and became the organizer and administrator of his Department of Scientific Warfare. That's another thing that puzzles me, Herr Doctor. Why a man of your brilliance should identify himself with a fanatical madman like Hitler? How dare you refer to Adolf Hitler as a madman? He was a great genius, ahead of his time. The world in its ignorance was not ready to accept him. The world did not accept him because he was a lunatic bent on enslaving it. Do you call a man who is responsible for the mass murder of millions a great man, a genius? Anyone with enough intelligence to examine history knows there are times when lives must be sacrificed for the benefit of future generations. And he was willing to do this in order to lead his people into... Into darkness, into oblivion. That's where he was leading them. And like all other power-crazed dictators before him, he failed. Thank God there were people in the world with enough courage to resist and to conquer him. What do you know in your stupid, petty little mind? You will forgive me, Mr. Crandall, for my outburst of temper. You are, of course, entitled to your own opinion for whatever small purpose it may serve you. Let me enlighten you, Mr. Crandall, on a few things of which you and the rest of the world are unfair. Blame for the loss of the war cannot be laid to Hitler or his doctrines. It was I who failed him. Me and the general staff. He called for weapons, super weapons, to turn the tide of war in those last few days. My inability to deliver those machines soon enough, we were defeated. It might interest you to know that during those last few months of the war, we had almost perfected weapons so far in advance of anything that had gone before them as to make modern warfare in all its forms completely obsolete. Only had time for further experiments. I know of some of your experiments, like the ones carried out in a certain concentration camp. Oh, then you know about the aging machine. Yeah, we had almost perfected that one when the war ended. Oh, but that machine was one of the more primitive devices, like the jets and the rockets that we, we used so briefly. We were in the final stages, Mr. Crandall, of perfecting weapons that were truly astounding and against which you would have had no defense. A cannon that killed with sound waves, yet was completely silent. A giant generator gun that could electrocute whole armies in the field. Oh, and more, many more. We'd have only had a few more months to perfect those weapons. He could have plucked victory from the jaws of defeat. The Territ Rice would have endured. Not for the thousand years as the Fuhrer dreamed, but forever. But the fact is that you failed, Herr Doctor. Failed and lost. Ah, but you are forgetting one thing, Mr. Crandall. That was 20 years ago. Since then, I have perfected and even improved on my original weapons. And we have conquered time. Dr. Einstein's so-called fourth dimension. Hitler will return, Mr. Crandall, and soon your victory was but a temporary one. I have my own underground atomic power supply. Here are the master controls. 
And here are the selectors. With this dial, I can control the sensory I wish to deal with. These other dials, of course, are for the selection of the, the year, the month, the day, even the hours and minutes and even seconds. These are the acceleration switches with which I can control the velocity or, or speed of the passage of certain relative segments of time. Just as you would increase or decrease the speed of an automobile. Is that too difficult for you to grasp, Mr. Crandall? Frankly, I'm beginning to doubt my sanity. Then you need. After all, there are very few people in the world who can understand uh, even Dr. Einstein's theory of relativity. And my theories go far beyond his. Uh, but you are an intelligent man, Mr. Crandall. Uh, perhaps I can explain it a bit more simply. We will let this line represent the world. With a line here to represent the equator, and a mark here and a mark here for the north and south poles. If an aircraft starts here, this side of the equator, and starts going up and up and up, it is going north, toward the North Pole. But the instant it passes over the pole, it is no longer going north. It is going south. And yet, it has not turned or changed its direction in any way. Now, that is the simplest way I know of to make you understand how my theory of superspectronic relativity was first developed. It has long been established that time and space do not exist except in relation to each other. Therefore, they are uh, inseparable, indivisible, uh, uh, a space-time continuum. The faster we travel in space, the faster we travel in time. Now, uh, let me use this short vertical line to represent an instant of time on this horizontal arrow to represent velocity or speed. Now then, scientists have long held that light is the top limiting velocity in the universe. In other words, there is nothing in the world faster than light. And yet it is known that beta particles ejected from the nuclei of radioactive substances can attain velocities up to 99% that of light. Now, I have always based my theories on the premise that there is no limit to space. The universe is limitless. Well, if there is no limit to space, then there is no limit to time and no limit to velocity. Therefore, I thought there must be something in the universe it was faster than light. <laughs> the years of frustration and failure before I finally had to submit to the one irrevocable fact there is nothing in the universe faster than light. But I discovered a new ray in the spectrum with a wavelength infinitely shorter even than that of the cosmic ray. This ray I called the minus ray. I'm afraid you lost me, Doctor. Well, in other words, while I discovered that the velocity of light is indeed the top velocity in the universe, that velocity need not remain constant. I discovered that through minus rays, velocity could actually be accelerated. And let me illustrate in this way. This line represents an instant in time. An instant, that is, in relation to our immediate vicinity in space. Now, if you enter a dark room on flip a switch, 
that room is instantly flooded with light. That is because that light, traveling at its great velocity, takes hardly any time at all to cover that small area of a room. It is immediate, instantaneous. Now, if that light had traveled any faster, it would have come on before you flipped the switch. Are you beginning to understand? I think so. Fine. Now then, just as I illustrated a moment ago, with the airplane flying up over the world, heading north until it passed over the North Pole, then its direction became south, the same thing is true in a sense of time. If the velocity of ordinary light, represented by this arrow, should be accelerated, then it will pass beyond the instant represented by this vertical line and no longer be moving in the direction of the future, but it will be moving in the direction of the past. It will no longer be going forward in time, but backward. The greater the velocity, or, or I should say, the greater the acceleration, the further back in time it will travel. In other words, if a guy left New York for Los Angeles and traveled fast enough, he'd get there before he started. In joke, Mr. Crandall, but crudely expressed, that is exactly what would happen. Why are you telling me all this? To impress upon you the superior scientific knowledge that we possess, my friend, and to illustrate why we would have won the war. If we had only had a few more months, we were the slaves of time then. Time was our master. But I, I have changed all that. Now we are the masters and time is our servant. Ah, oh, you Americans are an egotistical, arrogant lot. How proud and superior you felt as you strutted through the ruined streets of our cities. The proud conquerors claiming the spoils of war. But that is only temporary, my Yankee friend. Soon Hitler will return. We will rewrite history. And the Third Reich will endure. Not for a thousand years or a hundred thousand years. Forever! Immortality. The age-old dream of man is ours. The rest of the world will fall at our feet and we shall rule for all eternity! you have it all you transistor radio bugs